last 25 years. I spent half of that in full-time ministry, pastoring churches and planning churches. The other half, I was a top producing mortgage broker in Georgia from 01 to about 08, 09 when the market crashed. Uh, back into ministry again for about six years, planted a church with, a, with two families, grew that to a few hundred people. Back out of ministry, back into real estate full time, where last year, year before last, I finished seventh out of 3,700 agents in the fastest growing real estate company in the state of Georgia. Welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast, where we bring to you the most successful, happy, fulfilled gentlemen from around the world who have been able to conquer themselves, their life, their marriage, and their businesses. You will be learning from four dimensional gentlemen who have cracked the code to the science of having it all. The question is, how can married entrepreneurs with kids become gentlemen, achieve true freedom, and build a successful, happy, and fulfilled life, marriage, and business? This show will give you the answer for that. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I'm your host, and you're welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, Fulfillment Talk podcast. Hello, beautiful people. As always, I have an, a special guest. I actually met him in person before we got on this podcast. I met him at the 10X Growth Conference uh, by Grant Cardone. It was really fun. And before I introduce him to you, though, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been com leaving, leaving comments, reviews, likes on all the major podcasting platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, and to those who have been watching on YouTube as well. Thank you very much. And I want to ask you for a favor today. I want to ask you that if you get something out of this interview, if you get some piece of uh, knowledge, a, a feeling, something that inspires you to go and take action, something, I want to ask you to please share it with one friend, since this is how we grow, this is how we share our message, and this is how we're able to motivate, inspire, and bless other people to change their lives. So today, I have Ken Jocelyn. Is that, is that how you say your last name, Jocelyn? It's good. It sounds good, dude. I mean, you, you say it great. With It's a great accent. Yeah. <laughs> it's Jocelyn. It's Ken Jocelyn, Jocelyn, but yeah, you're good. There you go. CEO of Ken Jocelyn, Jocelyn team and the, and the Grow Stack Drive brand. Ken is a former pastor turned coach as well as a real estate professional. Ken Jocelyn is a driven leader who has closed over 250 million in real estate transactions. He's planted multiple churches, mentored hundreds. He's passionate in, about helping business leaders build confidence, gain clarity, create community. And more than that, He's a generous father, friend, and uh, entrepreneur. So, Ken, thank you very much for being here, man. Uh, I just met you last week. So, thank you for making time to be here with me. I really appreciate it. And you are welcome, man. Dude, I'm honored. I'm honored to be here, my friend. Thank you so much. Um, I, we just we shared off air just a minute ago. <clears throat> I got to hear a little bit of your story. I got to hear some of them. We were in Miami at GrowthCon with old Uncle G last week. Um, but, dude, I love your story. Love your passion, your age. Dude, there's tons of purpose, tons of, of passion, and tons of potential in your life, dude. And, I, dude, anytime I can connect with young guys that are where you are at your age, um, dude, it's super exciting. It's super refreshing and fulfilling for me, man. Yeah, that's amazing. I Well, for me as well, like what I got going on is refreshing and, and, and fulfilling as well. I, I think I, I don't know what I don't know. So, I mean, yeah. I, I like to think that I'm going to, like, put a dent in the universe. But I don't know what I don't know. So, so let's see what happens. The first thing that I do with my guest is that I ask them to introduce, well, walk us through their entrepreneurial journey in mm -hmm. 75 seconds or less. Wow. 75 seconds. Last 25 years, I spent half of that in full-time ministry, pastoring churches and planning churches. The other half, I was a top producing mortgage broker in Georgia from 01 to about 08, 09 when the market crashed. Uh, back into ministry again for about six years, planted a church with a with two families, grew that to a few hundred people. Back out of ministry, back into real estate full time, where last year, year before last, I finished seventh out of 3,700 agents in the fastest growing real estate company in the state of Georgia. Um, I've done about right now, probably close to 300 million in real estate transactions um, in that half of 25 years that I've been in full time uh, real estate. And then I started a, uh, about two years ago, I started a brand called Grow Stack Drive, where we help business leaders build confidence gain clarity and create community. We do that several different ways. I've got an online uh, community where we do a couple coaching calls a week, online courses geared, ar geared around strategy, mindset, and uh, leadership development. Well, we do a, a huge conference called Create in Atlanta every January. It's the number one entrepreneur conference in the Southeast. Guys like John Maxwell, guys like Ed Milet, guys like uh, Dave Meltzer, guys like Jesse Itzler, 
girls like Jen Gottlieb and Amberly Lago, just some really amazing friends of mine, come together, man, where we have several hundred entrepreneurs. Uh, and we do. We spend two and a half days helping them build confidence, gain clarity, and create community. Wrote a book, top 100 podcast right now on iTunes called As the Leader Grows. The book is the exact same. Um, we branded both of those together for a reason. The book really is um, all about significance over success. With that being said, significant leaders build others around them so they can win. Understanding and leaning into Zig Ziglar's quote, which is my favorite, if you help enough people get what they want, eventually you're going to get what you want. Whereas people who chase success use others around them so they themselves can win. And usually when that happens, we leave a trail of damage behind us and it doesn't work out well for anybody. So, dude, that's a, I hope that's 75 seconds, but uh, super excited to be a part of what you guys have got going on here, my friend. Man, um, well, it was, it was pretty, pretty, pretty uh, nice timing. It, it seems as if you practiced it before. <laughs> I've said that. I've said that a few times. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so let's see, let's see. Well, there's a lot that I want to dive in, but the first thing that I, that I, that I'm called to like, uh, talk about is when you help others get what they want, you'll be able to get what, 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 what you want. Right. Mm -hmm. And actually in the last, in the last like three months, I've been, I, I've gone from like being a solopreneur to having like 12 people in my team. And, um, you know, <laughs> when I'm, when I'm like hiring people, you know, and I'm interviewing them, I ask them about their goals and I tell them, Just like you are going to be my who to help me achieve my goals, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be your who that helps you achieve yours. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't make a fit, like if they don't have goals that I can help them achieve, which most of the time I can, then, then I would rather not work with them. Or if the person ha does, doesn't even have goals, right? Like, you know, like I just want, I just want for, the, I just want for me to be a chapter in their, in their, like, yeah. in their book, right? Yeah. Not, not, right? And, and then I tell them, like, I want to I wanna train you so well and be so, such a good leader that, You literally get the tool sets, mindsets, the skill sets to go off and go and create your own thing, you know, start your own company, achieve your goals, but you'll be treated so well that you want to stay, right? And um, so like if they don't have goals that I can help them achieve, I'd rather than not work with them. Or if they don't have goals, like they just don't have goals, like a vision, well, I'd rather than not work with them. So what's your take on that, man? Yeah, one of the things we do, I just, I'm about to onboard a new executive assistant and a like kind of a operations girl, just interviewed her this week. One of the things that we do in our hiring process is we walk through what we call our PPFs, our personal, professional, and financial goals. And even in that interview on Saturday, about a 45-minute interview with her, I walk through and very specific in the language that we used in that her name is Hannah. Hannah, I am just as interested in helping you achieve your personal, professional, and financial goals as mm -hmm. I am in you helping me reach the goals of Grow Stat Drive and my real estate team, the Ken Johnson team, because I want you to be successful. I want you to win. And if I can help build you up and you're winning in life and you're becoming the best version of who God designed you to be, then I know the overflow that what happens inside of my business is going to be phenomenal. Like we're going to absolutely crush it. So I make a commitment first to them to help them reach their PPFs. And then I ask them to make a commitment to me to help us reach our goals inside of GSD. And then not only will you have a lot of productivity from, from her, right? She'll be happy. She'll be happy and fulfilled oh. and she'll feel successful because she's doing something that is meaningful to her, that she's doing something that is taking her closer to her goals. And so personal, professional F and financial PPF. All right, man, mm -hmm. I'm going to take that from you, man. I got what I, what uh, I've been doing. I, I took it. I took it from Brandon Dawson at Cardo Adventure. So you can take it from me. <laughs> cool. So what I've been doing was just like intuitive, but uh, awesome. I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that, you know, it's something that mm -hmm. someone like Brandon Dawson is doing. So it works, right? Cool. Yeah, most definitely. So, so man, do you, you spent 25, 25 years, right. Of your, of, of your journey. Half of that was in ministry. Half of that was in real estate. So like, when did you start your entrepreneurial career? Like how old are you? Were, were you, how old were you 25 years ago or? Well, I, I actually 25 with the back up even before that. Um, you know, I said ministry was a huge part of that past 25 years in 1993. I gave my life to Christ, became a Christ follower about three years after that, we planted a church from scratch. They, 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 I was the youth pastor. They said, Hey, we need a youth guy. It's going to be you. And so I inherited about five or six students no idea what I was doing, no idea about vision, mission statement, core values, BHAGs, none of that. 
had no idea, got introduced to now a lifelong mentor of mine at a huge event, 10, 15,000 students, uh, got introduced to a guy named Ron who, was, who became a mentor of mine for several years. And I sat in a leadership session where he talked about mission statement, core values, and BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. And in that leadership session, my entire life transformed. I learned the power of a mission statement and created our mission statement. This was in 1990, probably seven or eight, created our mission statement in 45 seconds, just literally flowed started writing down core values. Literally, there's four or five core values that we had and then started planning. I had one of those big day timer calendars with the little, you're, you, you, they, didn't, they didn't have those when, at your age, they didn't have those. But back in the day, this was you know, 25, 30, 25, 26 years ago, they had these planners. So in the back, it had the next year's calendar and small. I wrote three years of vision down that day, three years. Everything that I wrote down inside that calendar, with the exception of one thing, came to pass over the next three years. And so really, that was my entrepreneurial journey, if you will. I mean, now, granted, it wasn't, it wasn't building a business. It was building a ministry. We went from a handful of kids to several hundred. I became, quickly became one of the top youth guys in the country, speaking on huge stages, uh, which is where the premise of my book, um, As the Leader Grows, The Significance Over Success, came from, because I was on a stage. Uh, right behind John Maxwell 20 years ago. And right behind me was, was another one of my mentors. Her name is Jeannie. And after that day, after I got off stage, she got off stage. She said, hey, can we do lunch tomorrow? And I said, I would love to. Well, we go to lunch the next day and she sits me down. And Alex, she asked me this question that changed my life. She said, do you want to be significant or do you want to be successful? Because those are two vastly different things. Because she saw a 30, 31-year-old kid on the stage behind like a giant in leadership uh, development and a giant in the faith in Dr. John Maxwell. And she saw me around some, some, some great leaders. And she knew that I really didn't have a clue that significance was greater than success. I knew I just got off the stage. I just got through being featured behind the one and only Dr. John Maxwell. And so that was the start of a journey that's been about 20 to 22 years in the making of really trying to live a significant life. Significant leaders or servant leaders, if you will, they do three things. And these three things are hugely important. I'd love for your audience, if you've got a pen or pencil, write these things down. Servant leaders, significant leaders, they put other people's needs before their own. It's not about me. It's about my team. It's not, if, listen, if, if somebody needs something, I'm the last one in line to get taken care of. Simon Sinek wrote a book, phenomenal book called Leaders Eat Last. Mm. And, and that's this principle literally is something that he talks about all throughout his book, Leaders Eat Last. So servant leaders put other people's needs before their own. They do things right the first time. Excellence has always been a huge core value of mine. Like if you're going to do things, do it with excellence. I'll never forget one of the things I heard. I was in youth ministry, had no idea what I was doing. And I heard Pastor Willie George say this one time. He said, teenagers aren't ashamed of God. They're just ashamed of their youth group. And I was like, Phew, it blew Wait, my mind. Wait, I didn't get it. Can you repeat that one more time? He said, he said, teenagers aren't ashamed of God. They're just ashamed of their youth group. Like they're ashamed of the way that we did youth ministry in churches because it was such at a level that did not carry excellence. And one of the things he talked about, and I heard Ron, my other mentor, talk about was Coke's vision back in 1999. Listen to this. Coca-Cola's vision was to have a Coke product within six foot of everyone on the face of the planet. Damn. I mean, like, the, like that is a world conquering vision statement. We want to have a Coke product six foot from everybody on the face of the planet. <laughs> Dude, that gives me goosebumps just even thinking about the audacity to be able to dream that big. Like, that's how big of a dream. I remember hearing these things, and I'm looking at Nike, and I'm looking at Coca-Cola, and I'm looking at MTV. MTV's mission statement back then was they didn't, they didn't want to market to a generation. We want to own this generation. That was their mission statement. And I'm like, how in the world can I do what I do and say that I serve, you know, Jesus or the most high God? How can I not have a bigger mission statement than these guys do? How can I not do things at the level of excellence that Nike 
or Coca-Cola or MTV or Pepsi-Cola or any of the major brands, how can I not do what a Mercedes-Benz does? How can I not operate with that level of excellence? So when I heard, when I heard Willie George say, teenagers aren't ashamed of their youth ministry, they're just ashamed of God. I said, they'll never be ashamed of my youth ministry again. Everything we do will be first class. And I don't even care if we, it doesn't, you can do excellence and not have a huge budget. Yeah. Excellence is a spirit. It's not something that you have. It's doesn't, it doesn't matter what your bank account looks like. It doesn't matter what your past looks like. Excellence is a spirit. And when you make a decision, I'm going to do things with excellence. I'm telling you, it begins to manifest in everything around you. So three things servant leaders do put other people's needs before their own do things right the first time or do things with, uh, do things with excellence, right. The first time, and then doing things without being asked, like, how can I be proactive in getting things done? How can I look around in my world and solve and help solve other people's problems? I got a call from a friend of mine. This was back in, I guess, 2010. It's been 10, 10 years, 11 years since the earthquake in Haiti. Got a call from a buddy of mine. It was five days after the earthquake in Haiti. He said, listen, I'm flying to Haiti and I want you to go with me. I called my good friend, David Pollock up from ESPN's College Game Day. And I don't think I've ever mentioned this before. And I said, Davey, listen, I'm taking a team to Haiti. And I, I want to know, if, I wanna know if, you're, if, you're, if you want to support us. I'll never forget, Davey gave me his American Express credit card number. He goes, whatever you need, you put it on this credit card number. So I took myself and two other guys. We went to, went to Haiti and we spent seven days. Literally, Alex, they were still stacking bodies up on the side of the street. It was devastation. Yeah. We slept outside in a rocking chair for like five or six nights. Like we, people were still afraid to sleep inside. We spent the entire waking moments of the day getting rice, beans, MREs from the airport and delivering them to different orphanages around Carrefour and Port-au-Prince. So servant leaders, dude, they take action. Like I don't have time to sit and wait. When I see a need, I'm going to go fulfill it. And a lot of people go, Kim, man, you just don't know my situation. Like, you don't understand what I deal with. I deal with anxiety or I deal with depression. I deal with all these big problems in my life. Listen, the quickest way for you to get out of your own space and your own issues and your own head is to go serve other people. So if you want to be a significant leader, a servant leader, put other people's needs before your own, make it about everybody else, not yourself. Do things right the first time. Have a high, have a, a, a very high level of excellence. And then do things without being asked. Be proactive in solving problems in the world around you, specifically with the people that you love and the community and the circle that you, you have relationships with. Amazing, man. So <clears throat> I read Simon Zinnick's book, Simon Zinnick's book, and I actually just read The Infinite Game, right? And he talks about, um, not mission statement, he talks about, what's it called? Uh core values vision statement it's like a it's like a vision oh ah i forgot the word man but yeah it's like a vision statement and like I, I'm, I'm i'm in the process of like doing it i i know what i'm doing but just like you man i want to make sure that it's big that it's almost like unachievable because uh he, he he uses a really cool example of a company that creates gps right and their vision statement just cost they're just cost so the just cost was something along the lines of we're going to be the ones that create the best GPS, right? But then, you know, technology comes and people start, stop using, stop using GPS, right? They, the phones come up. Now we have like GPS and yeah. we can like go anywhere in the world using our phone. And, but their identity, right? They were founded on being the best GPS, right? And then Simon Sinek said, if they would have, they would have, uh, if their vision statement would have been, instead of we're going to be the best GPS, crea GPS creators in the world, instead of that, it would have been, we are the ones who create the best ways to get people to their destination safely or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, something a little bit more like broad and big, they could have mm -hmm. adapted, right? But their identity was based on the GPS, which, mm -hmm. which became extinct, extinct, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. like I'm wanting to do this, my, my mission statement, but I want to make sure that it's like big. I still don't have it like established. Um, so like, what is yours, man? What is yours? Yeah, our mission statement is to help leaders build confidence, gain clarity and create community. Mm, uh, we really does. feel like confidence, clarity, and community are the three pillars that you have to have as a business leader and an entrepreneur. Confidence is currency. You spend, you spend that currency every single day, Alex, in every decision you make 
and in every relationship that you build. So confidence is number one. Clarity is number two. Like a lot of people get up in the morning, they have no idea where they're going. Yeah. I, I say this all the time. If you need it, if you need an alarm clock to get out of bed, your goals aren't big enough. Like you should have a purpose driving you out of bed. How, now, how do I keep that? How do I keep that purpose sharp and that and that iron hot? I write my goals down twice a day. This is our this is our GSD planner that I created. Nice. Goals, gratitude, affirmations. My top three for today, and then at the end of the day, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do my wins. Where did I win? I'm gonna do my one percent better. I'm gonna do my goals again, and then on the bottom of the page, I have a scoreboard. I'm gonna rate how I live today. At the end of the day, I'm gonna look back and I'm gonna go, okay. How did I live today? And I'm usually around an eight. Sometimes I'm a nine. I've given myself one ten, uh, and I cre we created this last June, so close to a year, ten months. The only ten I gave myself was after our create conference because we knocked it out of the park. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through that process every single day. I'm walking through that. Pro I'm keeping those goals in front of me. I'm in the writing the goals down twice a day. I actually got from Grant Cardone a couple of years ago, and this is how he explains it. If I write my goals or when I write my goals down twice a day, 365 days a year, I'll miss a day or two here and there. That's 730 times I write my goals down. What do you think the average guy writes his goals down? Never. Two Once times a, year. a day, beginning of the year. Let's just say, let's just say, let's say you give people the benefit of the doubt and they write their goals down once a month. 730. Let's say I miss 30 days. So that's, we'll take 60 out of that. Let's say I miss an entire month, which I don't. Let's say that's 670 times I write my goals down every day versus your 12. Who's going to win that battle? You. I'm going to, I'm going to dominate you. I'm just not going to win that. I'm going to absolutely crush anybody that is competition that's standing in front of me because I am so laser focused on where I want to go, on what I have to do. And then when I get up every single day, dude, my day timer, my planner, done. I know exactly what, when my alarm clock goes off, I already know what I'm going to do that day. Your Ooh, work yeah. day, your work day does not start when your alarm clock goes off. It better start the night before. When 100%. you wake up, you should know exactly what I've got to knock out that day. If you need to leave free space for creative time, what I call inventing the future, you know, brainstorming, dreaming, vision, paint, the paint whatever you want to call it. If you need to leave space, put space on your calendar. Like, do that. I use four color codes in my Google Calendar sitting right here. Blue, green, yellow, red. Blue is my personal development time. When I get up in the morning, do I have a morning routine? First thing I do is I grab my phone. I do my quiet time. I listen to worship. That's it, baby. I see you. I see you down there. I see you, little stud. I listen. I grab my phone. I do my quiet time. I do my uh, whatever worship I'm listening to. I snap a screenshot of that song. I put it on my Instagram story. I get dressed, grab my pre-workout. My clothes are already laying beside my bed in my chair, in my little sitting area. I'm ready to roll. I come in here. I'm listening to a podcast. Right now I'm listening to Brendan Bouchard's um, High Performance Habits. High perf I, I always want to say HPI, but it's High Performance Habits. I'm listening to Brenda's book. Um, and then it's gym time. 5 a.m. I'm at the gym. Do by 545. I'm sweating my ass off. I'm ready to roll. I come back, I take a shower and I'm on my first call or I'm recording a podcast. I'm shooting videos for my marketing company. I'm doing something. So by seven, you know, by seven, seven 30, I'm showered and I'm already, I'm already grabbing some breakfast and or a protein shake and I'm rolling for my day, man. You already produced more than 90. Most people get done by 9 a.m. I get more done than most people do all day. Hands down. Exactly. Yeah, man. Um, and uh, so I, I'm working with a, you know, the other day I was working with a, with a coaching client who literally struggles to wake up at 8 a.m., man, mm. right? And it's because what you just mentioned, he doesn't have purpose. He doesn't have yep. clarity, right? And, the, and, and one of the reasons he doesn't have clarity and, and, and clarity of purpose is because he lacks confidence to even think he deserves one, right? So right. there's a lot of yep. work. There's a lot of like mindset work that, that he has to go through. But um, so early right now in the conversation, man, you mentioned how in 1993, I believe it was, you set a three-year vision, right? Like you went on the calendar and mm -hmm. you wrote three years of vision and that every single thing, I believe, came With to reality, right? Thing. It, that was 1997, I think is when that was. So why? Well, why did it become a reality? Like, were you, um, did you write your goals down every single day or? or did no, you know, I, didn't, did you... I didn't write my goals down every day. I just was, there was such a, there was, God birthed such a vision in my heart. 
Habakkuk chapter two says, write the vision down so that the herald who reads it can run with it. Um, and there's, there's, there is a, there is a spiritual principle at play when you write goals. Now, when you put pen or pencil to paper, what you're doing is you're creating and inventing It's listen, just as in, in scripture, go back to Genesis chapter one, it says God spoke and he spoke the world into existence. That word, that word in the Hebrew is Ruach. It's the breath of God. Like he spoke, we have the same power not to speak and things just appear. We have the same power, the same, that entrepreneurial spirit that we have is comes straight from God. He is a creator. We are creators. Genesis 126 says we're creating God's image. Like we are created. We are a reflection is what that, that passage at 126 and Genesis 127. That's exactly what that means. We reflect the character and nature of who God is. When we do that, Alex, in the right way, we're creators. We're entrepreneurial. Like we're dreamers, we're big thinkers. And when you start writing things down, like when you, I remember, I remember the first time I wrote in my, in my calendar, we're going to do create conference in Atlanta, number one entrepreneur conference in the Southeast. And I'm going to have John Maxwell and Jesse Itzler and Randy Garn and, and Anthony trucks and Dave Meltzer, the real life, Jerry Maguire. And I'm going to have all the, when I started writing that down, I'm looking at it and I'm going, look, one of my goals right here is lose 106 pounds. It used to be 66 pounds, but now I'm down 75. So I'm like, you know what? We're going to bump it up 30 and then, I, then I'll be done. I want to lose 106. But when you start writing your goals down every single day and you're looking at them every day, it causes you to act different throughout the day. It causes you and uh, coupled with your top three, like what are the top three things I need to do today to move the needle of me getting towards those goals? And it leans into a habit or a principle that I call incremental, not monumental. Small daily discipline decisions over time always equal monumental results. Success cannot escape you if you do the right things every single day. 100%. And then Grant Cardone says that like the reason writing down your, your, your goals every single day works is because we're attracted to what's familiar, right? So yes. if you make your goals familiar, you're going to be attracted to them, right? And that's why like I go through, I have this thing called the mental pathway uh, reframing, right? Like I, 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 brain I brainwash myself every single day mm -hmm. into believing that everything that I want, all the goals, who I'm, who I'm going to become is for me. Right. And every single day I'm, I'm brainwashing myself and like, it's almost inevitable, man, to the, at this point that I'm not going to get there. Like it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get there. Like I, I can feel it. Right. right? And, uh, yeah, it's really awesome. And I really like that. We just said that we're creators, right? We're created, we're created in the, in God's image. He's a creator. We created in his image to create. And um, I actually had this realization the other a couple of weeks ago that um, God, like what's his power, right? Like imagination, that's like a God-given quality that we have, imagination, right? Our ability to think and our ability to like make that thought a reality. That's our God-given uh, ability that we're given. And he's a creator. So he thinks and creates like instantly. That, for him, it happens instantly because he's a, the almighty, all-powerful creator, right? Mm -hmm. For us, it takes time. And like the amount of time that it takes is determined on like your consistency, discipline, and focus, right? Mm -hmm. And in your case, your confidence, clarity, and like the community that you, that you bring mm -hmm. around, that you, that you build around you to, to help <laughs> you achieve those goals. Um, hey, sorry for the interruption. Real quick, do you want to know how I've been using my podcast to build a multi-million dollar network with over 100, seven, eight, and nine figure entrepreneurs? reach hundreds of my ideal clients with my message, coaching, service, and podcast, get invited to speak on four stages in the last two months alone, throw my own events and have over 100 successful entrepreneurs being willing to speak at my events, become a millionaire in one year, get mentored by multimillionaires and achieve goals that I thought were going to take me 10 years to achieve in one year and ultimately get unstuck and make quantum leaps of progress in my business and life with less than one hour of work just by being myself. If you answered yes to any of those, I just want to invite you to a free training showing you how I've been able to build a multi-million dollar network that is helping me achieve bigger income goals faster with only one hour of speaking and just being myself. To be honest, I thought I was going to be a multi-millionaire, speak on stages, throw my own events, and live a successful, happy, and fulfilled life of growth and impact in 10 years from now. That seemed so far away but my podcast has been able to help me do that in less than six months. 
I'm actually doing all of that this year at the age of 21 with my podcast. I'm reaching thousands of people with my message, my service, my podcast, my coaching. I've gotten booked to speak on four stages in the last two months. And on these stages, I'm going to be getting in front of hundreds of my ideal clients, making roughly around 15 to 30K plus per event. Not only that, I have a network of over 100 high level multi million dollar entrepreneurs who have all agreed to speak at my events. Getting clients is a problem of the past. I've gotten the opportunities to learn from billionaires and I'm collapsing decades of time and I'm literally achieving what I thought was going to take me 10 years to achieve in one year. All of this because I use podcasting as a networking tool and I leveraged a rare concept called the cloak track and I want you and I want the exact same thing for you. Just imagine where you could be in one year from now if you get this free training right now. That is why I'm inviting you to this training. On this short training, you're going to learn how a small group of purpose-driven entrepreneurs, authors, coaches, course creators, and speakers have combined podcasting with this rare concept called the cloak track to build a multi-million dollar network, reach thousands of their ideal clients with their message, books, courses, coaching, make an extra $118,800, get booked on 10 stages, and build a successful network of entrepreneurs who speak on their stage all of this in under six months. I'm going to walk you through the four steps to make this work. Step number one, alignment, getting clear on who you want to be, what you want to do, your goals, your purpose, and aligning all of this with building your podcast and your ideal podcast guest. Step number two, leveraging the cloak track to find your ideal podcast guest and never running out of them. Step number three, leveraging the cloak track to close an interview with anyone, no matter how rich, famous, or out of your league they may seem. And step number four, the content machine. The content machine is the key to tapping into other people's audiences. And I'm going to show you all of those four steps. The link to access this free training is in the description of this video. Click on it and go watch this training right now so that you can learn how you can to build a multi-million dollar network that helps you achieve bigger goals faster and with less effort. Note, this training is only available to 18 people. So act right now and I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Bye-bye. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I, I, I really like that. Uh, so let's see. Um, so man, what are your, what are your core values? You got five core values. Passion is how we attack our goals. Passion. Focus is how we dominate our calendar. Intentionality is how we communicate with, uh, with our clients and with our team. Uh, teachability. We're not only open to feedback, but we actively pursue feedback. And then the last one is flexibility. We live, in a, we live in a fluid world. We are open to and embrace change. We're constantly looking to how we get better. How can I get better? How can I improve? And I'm not, I had, it's funny, I was on the interview with my new executive assistant who starts in a couple of weeks. And she asked me about, they asked me about Outlook email versus Google mail. I said, listen, I'm not married to anything. Like I'm, I'm not married at all. Like whatever we need to change, if it helps us improve and get better, I'm all for it. There is nothing sacred inside of our organization zero the only thing that's sacred inside of our organization is the vision mm, right. everything else is up for debate yeah so that's that's flexibility that's a flexibility you're able to adapt right and be flexible and and realize that everything that everything changes um that's amazing man so let's see why why do you think um okay so so you went through your journey right you went through your journey uh, in real estate, you became the like the seventh, I believe, best mm -hmm. real estate agents in I don't know how many. Um, 3,725. 3,725. All right. So it, it's, yep. it's, it's quite a big number. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and to finish like seventh is, is quite an accomplishment. You had, a, you know, your 25 years previous to that of, you know, achieving achievement in ministry, right? Built churches, spoke on stages and stuff. And then you went on to real estate and still and, and still had this achievement. So why, why, man? Like, is there something special with you or, or like, are you, do you have something that people like it other people don't all, have? It all goes back to exactly what we talked about when it comes to servant leadership. When I got, when I got that a couple of years ago, I got a huge, we had a black tie event and I got a huge award, big, like clear plaque trophy. It was, it's, I mean, it's amazing. It's sitting in my office. I got that big award. And I had hired a, I had a young agent who came onto our team and he goes, dude, I want one of those awards. 
And I said, he goes, I want one of those awards this year. I said, well, you're probably not going to get one this year because I've been doing this for a long time. I've been adding value to people for 20 years. I spent zero money on advertising or marketing. Everything that I did in real estate that year came from word of mouth because of the way that I took care of my, of my clients and my, and I treated them like family. I mean, everything came from that. So no, I'm not special. I just, I have a high EQ, a relation like you. I take care of people. I serve people. I put other people's needs before my own. I do things right the first time and I do things without being asked. Those three principles are a life changer if you'll do them. Mm, okay. Again, so put needs, others needs before yours. Excellence, yeah, do things right from the first time mm -hmm. and then uh, do things without being asked. So that's, mm -hmm. that's why, that's why, like those principles, which are like also like Jesus traits, right? Like that's what he did, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, Amazing, man. So when did you through through this uh, entrepreneurial event? When was it? When, when was the first uh, January? Year? We, do, we do one in January, the end of January every year. Every year? And when was the first year you did it? Uh, about two months ago. <laughs> oh, this was the, like the first time? So I've done. So I've done five live events. We were doing boot camps, smaller events, 40 to 50 people, five grand a pop. I mean, an unbelievable lineup. I mean, Carlos Reyes, uh, Greg Reed, Sharon Lecter, who's a co-author, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Jeff Finster, CEO of Everbold, top 40, under 40 CEO in every magazine from Fords to Inc. to Entrepreneur. Um, I mean, just some phenomenal people. Uh, like I said, Anthony Trucks, former NFL player, speaks on stages for, for Dean Graziosi and Tony and, and, and um, Russell Brunson. I mean, just some phenomenal, phenomenal friends of mine. So we were doing some smaller events, but you know, I said, you know what? I'm going to do, we're going to do something big. I want to make an impact and a splash in the Atlanta area where I'm from. And so we brought the Create Conference to Atlanta. And so next year, we've got John Maxwell lined up, Ed Milet, my good friend Randy Garn, who is the coach to the coaches. Um, so we're going to have an amazing time next year, man. It's going to be fun. Cool. Awesome, man. So look, one other, I want to do a big event as well, um, mm -hmm. right from the bat. I don't know if, I don't know if that, that's the right way to go. That's what I want. So like the, my event is going to be happening next, next year. On the first quarter, I want it to happen as well on the first quarter of the mm -hmm. year. And one of the reasons of why I intentionally started my podcast is to build a huge network of people, mm -hmm. of, just like the people that you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Carlos Reyes is going to be on my podcast. Uh, you yeah. know, he's Mexican as me as, like me as well. So we're, like, we, we connected really well, right? Yeah. Jeff Fenster was on my podcast already. Uh, yeah. Ed Milet will be on my podcast. Uh, you know, so the reason, one of the reasons that I started my podcast intentionally is to like build this huge yeah. network, get yeah. proximity with those kinds of people. And so far, I've had 70 interviews with men who are decades ahead of me, right? Mm -hmm. Seven, eight, even nine-figure entrepreneurs. And they've all said yes to go speak at my event. So, which I, you know, I think it's pretty cool. I feel it's pretty cool. And uh, next year, I'm going to be throwing my event, man. So what advice do you have for me? Or for anyone oh. who wants to throw their event and motivate, inspire, and bless thousands of people? Well, here's what I would say to you. I, it's, it's, I actually wrote this quote. I'll show it to you real quick for anybody watching this on video. You see this quote on the bottom of my planner, get in rooms with people who think bigger than you do. Mm. I actually wrote that. I've got about 11, 10 X planners over there. Uh, when I first met Grant a couple of years ago that I wrote that quote in my planner every single day, you just named off several really, really good friends of mine. Ed Milet's not a personal friend, but I know Ed Carlos Reyes is a personal friend of mine. Jeff Finster is a really good personal friend of mine. I've got some really, really amazing friends, John Maxwell, Dave Meltzer, Jesse Itzler, Jen Gottlieb, Amberly Lago, Gary Brecka from 10X Health Systems is actually not only just a person, he's, he's in my mastermind. Um, Brent Gove, one of the top guys at EXP, 30,000 agents in his organization, over a million dollars a month in residual income. My buddy, Master Jeff Forbes Magazine calls him the Tony Robbins of Persia. He does huge events. We're planning a huge event in Dubai with myself, with Jeff, and with Sadhguru. Uh, in like Novemberish, um, it, dude, it's all about the people you spend time with. It is 100% about those people because the more you spend time with those guys, the, the more your mindset and your belief lid is raised because you think things are possible that before you would have never thought were possible. Yeah. I sat two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I sat with, a, I sat with, um, I sat with Jeff and he said, this is what he said. He said, what's your, what are your goals this year? I said, I want to do a million dollars. 
He leaned across the table and he goes, a month or a week? And I said, no, no, no. Now I want to do a million dollars this year. In That's total. what I want to do. You were thinking just a month. <laughs> and he went, he leaned across the table again, Alex. He goes, a month or a week? And I said, no, no, no. I, oh, okay. I said, dude, just let me catch up to the million in a year. And then I'll go for a million a month. But he was, he was pushing me past my ability to be able to dream. He was pushing me past my ability to be able to see and paint the picture of what my future was going to look like. It's exactly what he was doing. And when you hang around people like that, what happens is it raises your belief lid. So for you, my advice would be get in rooms with people who think bigger than you do. Do whatever you've got to do. I'm going to pitch you right here on your podcast. You need to be in our mastermind. I've got two young guys. A boss just sent me. Look at here. I'll show you this right here. Look at this. I just got this email last night, right before I went to bed. Boom, look at that. Look at this right here. What does that say? Uh, 25K investment. 25K payment has been received. That's a boss's mastermind. He paid me last night. Like he's a 24 year old kid, number one agent in the Bay Area at 24. He moved from Baghdad when he was 12. He's not even an American citizen. I mean, You want to talk like Carlos is a really good friend. He's been deported eight times as a kid, lost his brother a couple years ago, just retired his mother last year. I mean, this kid is 24 years old, just closed on his first real estate syndication, 194 door unit in Dallas, Texas, $30.8 million. And he raised 8.1 million to get the, to buy the property. And he's already looking at another one right now. I was on the phone with him for 30 minutes this weekend. Yeah. Like, like these are the guys You, you need to be hanging around this guy. Jay DeHaan, you need to be hanging around him. My buddy from Washington who has an AI that does day trading, who made a few million bucks last year. I think he's 24, 25. Phenomenal young, I mean, phenomenal character, full of integrity, but guys who think at completely different levels. Yeah, that's, man, the number one <clears throat> The number one like benefits from having my podcast and interviewing over 70 of these high level people in this past couple of months. Yeah, I've got opportunities, you know, I've got a lot, you know, I made money from 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 the net from the network from the relationship that I built and all of that is cool, but the biggest benefit, the number one benefit is the change in my identity. Like mm. the, the 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 shift in who I believe myself to be because every time I get on these interviews it's like holding up a big mirror in front of me and I'm able yep. to see all of the good things that I already have. And all the things that I have to yet develop, right? And like the biggest benefit is just my, how I see myself, like my belief, right? My, my, my thinking. And you're definitely right, man. Getting people with, you know, getting rooms with people who think bigger than you, right? That, is that the quote? That's it. That's it. 100%. That's the key. And uh, yeah, man, uh, you know, we can keep on talking about getting on your mastermind. Actually, like this year is the year of building a network because mm -hmm. I realized that, Life is all about putting other, uh, other people's needs first, right? Life is all about having like an, an attitude of excellence, right? Which I have uh, physical, personal, and professional excellence. That's, how, that's, that's what I live by every single day. Mm -hmm. and, and like life is about doing things without being asked, like about solving other people's problems without, without being asked. Like that's mm -hmm. how you, you, you gain success. And I realized this, this, you know, before coming into 2022. So This uh, year is, is, uh, is focused on like building um, this massive network and seeing how I can impact or serve every single person in my network. So Listen, yeah, we can keep on talking about there that. There is no greater investment anybody can make. Dude, I spent, I spent over six figures last year on me. I 100%. Spent, yeah. I spent over 80 grand with Grant last year. I mean, there is no greater investment you can make than investing in yourself. No greater investment. And I'm just not talking about you, but I'm talking about for everybody listening to your podcast today. Um, there's no greater investment. 100%, man. In the last, what, three years, I've invested over, over 150K on myself. Mm -hmm. And actually three years ago, I didn't even know how to speak English, man. So that's how like yeah, how much I've invested in myself. That's awesome, dude. Right? So um, yeah, man, we're almost out of time. And I would like to ask you like the five questions that I always mm -hmm. end my interviews with. Mm -hmm. The first one is... What advice would you give your 20 year old self if you could like not change your life or redo anything? No, no just yep. give your 20 year old self some this advice. One, we'll this one's easy. Find the most successful people that you know and get around that them. are not just, you better believe it. And, but not just successful people, but fantastic human beings. Mm. Like I've got guys in my mastermind that are worth 
tens of millions of dollars, but they're fantastic human beings. Like I was with my buddy, Jeff. We were at the Utah jazz game. Jeff Fenster. No, I was with no Jeff, master Jeff. Mm. Um, my, my Persian guy. I was with Jeff at the Utah jazz game with Randy Garn. And I, I said, I made a comment about ice water. I'm like, didn't want to get bottles of water. He got up and went and got me water. Dude, he owns hotels all over Iran, all over Malaysia, all over Dubai. He's, he's worth tens and tens of millions of dollars. And here he is. He pops up and goes and serves me and grabs me up ice water. My like, dude, you don't, I didn't want you to give me an ice water. I just made a comment. But like, those are the people you've got to find great human beings who understand significance and they're crushing it. I don't care if you got to go work for them. Let me ask you a question. If you go to college for four years, what do you think the average cost is for college for four years? What's the average student loan debt? hundred grand? Yeah. 60 probably. grand? 80 Run grand? That. So, so what if you just went to work for somebody like that for free? For free. Yeah. For three to four years, you got zero student debt. And look, <laughs> look how much farther advanced you're going to be than everybody else that went to school. Unless you want to be a doctor or an attorney or a dentist or something like that I mean, that you have to go to school for. But if you don't, if you want to be an entrepreneur, go find somebody that's already crushed it and go, listen, I'll serve you. I'll just, just give me the opportunity to come hang out with you. Give me 90 days and let me, let me, let me prove that I'm worth my salt. Cool. Amazing, amazing feedback. Amazing um, advice. The second question, man, is <clears throat> what is one mindset shift that you've had that you can share with us that has contributed to your success? Um, it came from getting in rooms with people who think bigger than I do. I'm not just a story I shared just a while ago on seven figures. I want to earn seven figures. Well, is, that a, is that a month or is that a week? I mean, the, I think the biggest mindset is, is understanding the right people you need to be around to help you blow different lids off of different areas in your mindset yeah. like who are the people i need to be around for finances who are the people i need to be around for relationships who are the people i need to be around when it comes to my physical health who are the people that i need to be around when it comes to my spiritual health who are the people i need to be around when it comes to my relational health find those people pull those serve those people whatever you can do to get those people in your circle where you're spending a good amount of time with those guys be a world changer for you uh Yeah, 100%. It's very simple. So I've invested in like mindset coaches and done a lot of like mindset work and gotten rid of my trauma and got, gone back to like my subconscious mind to get rid of limiting beliefs and fears and doubts. And I've done a lot of like mindset work, intentional mindset work with mindset coaches. But man, like there's nothing that compares with just simply putting yourself <laughs> in rooms with people who think bigger than you. Nope. Like that is the mindset... Like that is the biggest mindset tool or the biggest mindset hack that you can, that you can use to work on your mindset. Just put yourself with people who have an amazing mindset and then it'll, yep. it'll like, it'll, it will like shove off on you. Right. Mm -hmm. So Most definitely mindset map map. It's about clarity, man. So yeah. what is like a piece of advice, tool, tactic, or strategy that you can give someone if they want more clarity in their life? Develop some core values. That's what I teach in one of my courses, develop some core values, filter everything you do through those core values. Like, You've got your, you got your mission. Ours is to, is to help business leaders around the world, build confidence, gain clarity, create community. We've got our five core values, passion, focus, intentionality, teachability, flexibility. Your mission statement or your vision statements, where you're going point A to point B. Like I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. If I want to go to Atlanta. Okay. My, my goal vision is to get to Atlanta. There's lots of different ways I can get there, but the best way, fastest way, easiest way is to drive right down here to I-20 and hop on the interstate and it takes me two hours. I get there in about an hour 50 because I maybe drive a little fast, <laughs> but develop core values and core values will help. Not only will they give you, so I would say two things on clarity. Number one, get core values. So you know, you know what the route is you're going to take to get from point A to point B in your vision. Number two, you just got to get moving. Speed increases focus. Mm. You can't see obstacles You can't see things that are in the way of you and your vision. If you're not moving, you start to get moving. It's exactly right. Cool. Core values and start moving. Simple. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Uh, mindset map motion. What is one habit that you have that you think has contributed to your success? Uh, incremental, not monumental. Small daily discipline decisions over time always equal monumental results. Success cannot escape you when you do the right things every single day. It's how I've lost. And I'll show you this picture right here. It's how I've dropped. 75 pounds in the last, in the last two years, bam, 
Mm, holy shit, man. That's how you were? How, how yeah. many years ago? That was like a year and a half, two years ago. That was yeah. less than two years ago. Yeah. 75 pounds. Yeah. And now I'm going after my last 30 before my next event, July the 7th. I'll be down 100. But it's so when you talk, it's discipline, it's consistency. It day is day in and day out. It is incremental, not monumental, dude. If on December the 9th of 2019, Grant flew me down, and I don't know, there's probably 10 or 12 other like people that were in the first mentorship that Grant did. It's one of the very first mentorships he did. There was like a 1,200, 1,100, 1,200 people in that mentorship. And out of all those, 12 of us got invited to come down. Out of the 12, I was the one that got to share my story in front of the entire team, 180 people, sales team, everybody, everybody at Cardone. Uh, I got to share my story in front of all of them. And then Grant, Jared, Sherry, Richie Dolan, who used to run the uh, licensee program, they came in. We got, we got a half a day with them. I got to share my story in front of all of those guys. Out of those 12 to 13, 14 people that were in that, in that, around those tables, maybe three of them are still going today that I, that I know, that I know, that I know are crushing it and still doing it at levels we were two years ago. A lot of men have given up because it's hard and you just can't quit. Incremental, not monumental, small daily discipline decisions over time always equal monumental results. Success cannot escape you if you do the right things every single day. Amazing. Mindset yep. map, motion, measure. The last question is around yep. uh, tracking and measuring, man. What is your, yep. what are you dictating on that? Tracking and measuring. Uh, you ever been to a t-ball game? You know what t-ball is? T-ball. T-ball is like when the little five-year-olds playing baseball. Got it. You don't pitch it. You just put it on the tee. You know, and the little kids are five or six. and They've never played baseball before. They hit it off the tee. And little Johnny runs to third base and coach has to grab him and point him to first. There's 30 <laughs> kids. There's 30 kids in the outfield. So much excitement. Mom, dad, grandparents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, everybody screaming for little Johnny. Run! There is so much excitement, so much energy, so much motion, so all of this stuff going on. But at the end of the hour, everybody goes home and nobody knows who won. Why? because they don't keep scoring T-ball games. And that looks like a lot of our businesses. Mm. A lot of energy, a lot of motion, a lot of excitement, a lot of With things going on, game. but nobody keeps score. Do you know what your win is in your business every single day? Do you have KPIs and metrics to say, yes, we won today? Yes, we did exactly what we were supposed to do. Because listen, when you don't have metrics or KPIs in your business, what happens is it does look like a T-ball game. Tons of excitement. People are shouting, hollering, energy. Everybody's having a blast. But at the end of the day, you, don't, you cannot look up, number one, and tell whether or not you're winning. Number two, normally what happens is you expend a lot of energy on things that do not matter. Yeah. Yeah. So then tracking and measuring is important. Amazing, oh, man. Huge. So Ken, um, if, 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 if people, like, I love this conversation, man. I had a lot of time, had a blast. So like if anyone who's listening, who will listen, uh, listens to this as well and loves Ken and wants to build confidence, gain clarity and create community and, uh, you know, be part of anything that you got going on, where should they go? Yeah, best place to get in touch with me is Instagram at Ken Jocelyn. Um, just make sure I've got about 30,000 followers. Make sure it's not one of the other I get three or four fakes a month, um, which it's is crazy, crazy, right? Yeah, It's insane. I get three or four months. I got another new one yesterday. At Ken Jocelyn, uh, you can go to our website, growstackdrive.com. If you're a business owner, if you're a business owner and you are at that seven figure a year mark or more, um, GSD Elite would be a fantastic place for you. It's growstackdrive.com forward slash elite. Um, and then our podcast, dude, uh, As the Leader Grows. Uh, and we've got, like I said, top 100 podcasts. It's been really cool. And I get to interview a lot of really, really cool people. And then I, once a week I do, co I call coaching with Ken. Um, I did one this morning. We released it on how to build momentum. Like, what do I do? How do I build my, if I don't have momentum, how do I build it? So I dropped that today. It's about a 15, 20 minute podcast with just me. And then every Wednesday we drop an interview with guys like Grant Cardone, Bradley, Sharon Lecter, David Pollock. I mean, some really, really cool friends of mine. Nice. Nice. Well, thank you very much, man. Um, you have your podcast. It's probably been a game, gen game changer for you, right? If, if it's probably led oh, to huge. you doing huge. a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, relationships. It's mm -hmm. done that for, for me as well. Like the, the, mm -hmm. the benefits that I've had for my podcast are amazing. 
So mm -hmm. there's going to be a special link as well in the description of wherever this appears, just for the Ken Jocelyn um, episode. And it's going to take anyone who's interested in like podcasting on a training, on an A to Z training, mm. free A to Z training on that, that will teach them how to start, grow, launch, monetize, and automate a million dollar network building podcast. So uh, that's going to be a, just a special link just for the Ken Jocelyn episode, like I said. And uh, thank you very much for being here, man. And unless you want to see say anything else, well, we're, we're set. No, we're good, dude. I appreciate you, Alex. Awesome, man. See you later. Thanks, buddy. Thank you for watching the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with one friend, leave us a comment, and let us know. 99% of people never leave a review or comment, but we love and are very thankful with the 1% of you who do. If there's something or someone you want to see on this podcast, send me a message on Instagram at Alex underscore Ramirez 1020 and let me know. I say thank you for that. I have an amazing surprise for each and every one of you who does take the time to leave us a comment or review on YouTube or one of the major podcasting platforms 